When George Gordon Meade shows up and expresses his anger that his generals had failed to move, had failed to capture Petersburg, on the 18th of June, ready or not, here they come. And the brigade over which Joshua Chamberlain was now the commander was ordered forward. He initially says no. He sends to the Union command, much as Elijah Walker had on the second day of the Battle of Gettysburg, you're not seeing what I see. I can't go there. Go back and, and tell them that and, and I'll take whatever instructions you give me. Well, Chamberlain had moved his units forward so he could peek up over the hill. He could see what was waiting for him. And before he would say, all right, I'm going to follow this command, he said, I'm going to check and make sure that this is what you want because what we really need is more men than what we have. And he was able to get Union Command to commit more forces to join Chamberlain's brigade going forward. As he was going forward and the Confederate forces enfiladed fire, artillery, infantry, the whole shebang, his forces shot out from under him. And as he topples forward and he's, he grabs the standard bearer, his flag, regiment of flag, it's a Maltese cross on the flag. He's holding the flag up, he's got the saber in one hand and the flag in the other. He's encouraging the men to go forward. He's leading in advance. Generally what happens is the guy who's waving the flag and the guy who's wearing the fancy uniform is the target. And Chamberlain is hit by a sniper or by a, just somebody, a random shot. And he's hit in his pelvis and it goes in the right side and almost comes out the left. And he realizes he's been hit, it stings, he's in pain. And he sees the blood going down his leg. He sees it going into the top of his boot. He's holding himself up with a saber and he has to let go of the flag and he's rejecting the ministrations of his own men saying we've got to get you back, we've got to take care of you. And he believed going into this battle that he was not going to survive it. And he had said his goodbyes the night before. So he thought this was it, that he'd been shot and he was going to die. And everybody who came up to him seeing the wound and seeing how much blood he had lost, agreed with him. When he struck, his commanding officer, who's the same guy who a year ago, General Governor Warren, was the one who spotted the hole on Little Round Top. And when Chamberlain showed up, said, get over there and hold that position at all cost, came up to Chamberlain and saw the wound saw the blood gushing out of the wound and thought, oh my God, he's dying. He's going to die. He immediately sends word to General Ulysses S. Grant and says, please, Joshua Chamberlain has been such a contributor and such a leader. Give him a battlefield promotion. For only the second time under General Grant, a battlefield promotion is given. And this one raises Joshua Chamberlain to Brigadier General as they cart him away on a litter and they, they take him to a hospital outside of Washington. He barely makes it. His, his brother shows up, his four officers show up to say goodbye. And somehow, through the miracle of what was <laughs> amazing medicine, he is able to pull through. Not only does he pull through, this is June of 1864, but by the time they get to the end of March of 1865, Joshua Chamberlain is back in the saddle, commanding the brigade and chasing down the Army of Northern Virginia to Appomattox and accepting the surrender of Robert E. Lee. Thanks for watching, and don't miss a single episode as we delve into the fascinating history of Maine's role in the Civil War. Please like and subscribe now.